Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I am Mike, and I have never seen a Dune film before. I never saw the original movie, I never saw the remake or read the book, but I'm just not a big fantasy guy, you know? I, I don't like Lord of the Rings. I'm a mild Star Wars appreciator of like the original films. I'm not even into stepmoms. So fantasy just doesn't do it for me. It's not my thing. But with Dune 2 coming out this week, I thought, what the heck? Let's just step out into the sandy son of a gun and feel around a little bit. No, let's just be honest. I saw the popcorn bucket and I was like, I gotta see how that works. It's like the three seashells of movie food. But to be honest with you, what really drew me into this was Denis Villeneuve. I love his movies. I loved Arrival and Sicario was great. Prisoners was awesome. He's becoming one of those directors where you just have to see any movie that he puts out like Christopher Nolan, Sam Raimi, whoever did Madame Webb, Madame Webb. You definitely got to see every movie they put out now. But the movies always look beautiful. The cinematography is always amazing. He has this trademark visual style just like David Fincher that I just love so much. And in the first scene, I got over all of my sci-fi fantasy boredom reservations about the movie. Cinematographer Greg Frazier in this movie did a fantastic job. He did, he worked on The Batman. He worked on Killing Them Softly with Brad Pitt and him, both movies that have amazing cinematography in them. And this is no different. The entire movie is just draped in big, dark, spectacle that I could just sit and stare at for hours. And I did, almost three of them. But the way Villeneuve frames shots, it's like Kubrick. He, he can take scenes that would otherwise possibly be boring scenes and just smack you in the face with awe. It's 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 amazing. If, if I could do anything in the movie industry, it would be cinematography just because of people like him and David Fincher. I know they're not the cinematographers, but they know what they want. They know the style and exactly what they want on their film. I'm glad that I took the time to watch this movie to experience it because I am now a fan of this franchise. And I can't wait to see what happens in part two. You know, I thought this movie was gonna be insane or crazy or the story was just going to be out there and weird and wild like a bad trip or going karaoke with Ezra Miller in Hawaii but what I found really interesting is that for all its extravagant visuals and all this wild stuff that it's doing and creating these new worlds and weapons and people and all this stuff is that the story when it boils down is really simple there's a planet called Arrakis that's really sandy and they produce something called spice that can either be used as a hallucinogen or as the key to interstellar space travel two things at once what it boils down to is this dude played by Timothy Chalamet is the golden child of this royal family and the mass is believe he may be the one which is either Keanu Reeves or Jesus and they're, they're given this spice planet that produces this spice that we talked about by an evil overlord who is actually sending them there to double cross them and blow all their stuff up first off I absolutely love what they're doing with the dark side of the force over here I think David Batista looks cool he, he's weird and kind of creepy just stomping around these dark sets of this movie some of my favorite parts of the movie were either Batista or creepy spectral floating around Jabba the Hutt scar scarred over there Oscar Isaacs is always amazing in everything he does and he's no different here he's quickly becoming sort of a Sean Bean type of actor to me though like it either seems like like he's amazing in a movie that's not that interesting or he gets killed off or doesn't it just there's it seems like there's always something keeping him back as an actor to me I don't know what it is but I think that we have not seen his best work or definitely not his best movies yet and I loved how they handled the tooth poison thing with his character that scene was gnarly that was such a cool idea that could have been the end of a lesser movie, you know? That could have been the big moment finale at the end. It was so cool. I also love Josh Brolin in this movie. I love that he's like the, he's the 300 type of character who's supposed to beat the crap out of this kid and, and force him to be an actual warrior. But Josh Brolin's just perfect for that because he's so over the top and like manly, you know? But that does bring me to some of my less favorite casting of the movie. I don't get Timothy Chalamet, all right? I said it. People are not gonna like me for this. I'm gonna get a lot of crap for it, but I don't have any problem with him. I don't think he's a bad actor, but specifically in this role, I just have a hard time believing that he's this super all-powerful, badass killer warrior. Even in the fight scenes where he, where he shows his skills off, I'm just like, I, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Nothing against him at all. I just wouldn't have pegged him for that role. And I'm gonna sound like an old man here, but I also really don't get Hollywood's fascination with Zendaya. Like, nothing against her, nothing wrong with her in any performance I've ever seen her in. But like, from this to Spider-Man, to the movie, the tennis movie, where she's also doing two things at once, two things at once. This is gonna make me sound really old, but when I see her character, I, I kinda just see a rude teenager with a bad attitude that needs to learn some manners. And honestly, when we look forward to the next movie, I'm just not sure why we're supposed to be so interested in those two and their characters and their story together. I, I, I didn't find myself dying to know more. I'm more interested in the big worms and all the other crap going around. 
Hey, what's up, big perm? I mean, big worm. But speaking of the big worms, they were just amazing. When I saw them come on screen, I felt like I was watching Jean de Bont's Twister. You know, it's just, it's it's awe inspiring to look at them and they're filmed so well and they're so dang big and just freaky and weird looking. It really is like looking at a tornado in the movie Twister. And there's all these cool landscapes and really well thought out weaponry, like those little needle bugs that are so dangerous that are controlled like little drones. I thought that was super dope. And they've got freaking knives that are made from this thing called Shai Hulud's teeth. Every th single thing is thought out and has has this deep story behind it and I love it. Now I know that that's kind of why people are so fascinated with Star Wars and stuff, but this is all a little less silly and playful and and it's sort of like dark and like sleek and kind of cooler to me. So, and that's really more my speed. Speaking of which, I do also kind of wish that the movie wasn't PG-13. I wish they could have gone R because there feels like there's some themes here that they could have explored and gone darker with that would have made the movie a little bit more captivating for me. And I know people hate that shit. Not everything has to be dark and gritty and R-rated. I know, but like sometimes it's just like, I would want to see that scene where Batista's about to cut someone's head off, you know? And the movie also does as, gr as great as it is and grandiose as it is with these giant sets and by the way they're beautiful every shot again is so beautiful in this movie like I would love to see this director make an X-Men movie with this kind of scope you know and this kind of money I think that would be amazing and the reason I think of that is because when they have these these uh fleets in there they kind of like remind me of like X-Jets or whatever I don't know they just look cool like I want to see Magneto walk out of one of those damn things right but it definitely has sort of part one syndrome going on for sure we'll really know how great this movie and the next one is once they're both out and we can really see where all this leads to because yeah, they're, they spend a lot of time building stuff up in this movie. And I'm kind of waiting for that gigantic, mind-blowing moment to happen. Like, it didn't happen in the first movie. I wasn't, like, just absolutely blown away by this movie. But, like, I could sense it. Like, something's coming, and, and Villanova's going to knock my socks off. And I can feel that coming. So I have really high expectations for Dune 2. I, I hope that this thing is crazy. I hope it's wild. And I hope that the story just goes batshit poopy pants on us, to be honest with you. So... I have high I have high expectations for Dune Part 2, but I think if it does land, it's this going to make this movie so much better than it already is. And as it stands, I will give this movie 7.5 because, again, it's beautiful and it's well acted and there's some really cool concepts. But that score could absolutely shoot up if Dune 2 is able to fill in those kind of holes, if that makes sense. I love your faces. Everybody have a great day.